Hi everyone, in this video what we will try to show you is how to print a float numbers in assembly language. Let me start a new file here, new. Uh, as we said, we're going to have a two sec definitely, mostly we'll have two areas, dot .data and dot .text. And as I said, all the variables, so all, the, especially the data will be stored here and the main programming will be done in this one. Now let's say for example, if you want to you know, print a float numbers. So let's take a variable, something like this. So FL or float one. You can take any name of the variable you feel like. So I'm saying, okay, I want to take a name of a variable float. You have to say a type, which you can see if to store, a, to declare a float variable, you can say dot float or you can say what dot double. Okay, so let's say for example, if you want to st store float, float and double are same, just remember that double have a little more higher precision you can store up to more decimal places and float has a less capability on that so let's say if i want to so okay or let's say you know what like we'll say pi value so let's say pi value okay and it has a value of 3.0 let's say a pi value 3.145 you can store up more than that Okay, so, but float has a limited since you can't store many float values. Okay, you can store up to five to six decimal places depending on how much you are storing on this side. So, now let's say if I want to print this float numbers. First of all, you need to load this float numbers in coprocessor register. Okay, not in registers. As we said already in earlier video, registers can store numbers integers numbers or it can also store memory address memory but again the address memory has to be integer so any integer you can store in this particular registers in order to deal with float numbers they created another register which is known as coprocessor register coprocessor register one so you have in coprocessor they're giving a register from dollar f0 to 31 so if you're dealing to store float you can take any registers to store it any registers but remember, when you are about to print any float register, remember it has to be loaded in F12 as an argument. Like say for example, if I come back, if you was printing an integer, which I told it was a sorry in the last video, any integer which you want to print has to be loaded as an argument in A0. Okay, as an argument register. If you don't load what value you want to print it, they won't print it. So you have to load the number in A0. In a similar way, if you want to print a float, it has to be loaded in F12. You can store anywhere, but when you want to about to print, you have to bring it to F12. So that's why how to bring that this value to F12 before you want to print it. So you can give a command call L dot S. Now S means single precision, that stands for float. And if you want to load double, you can say this double. But since this is float, I'll say L dot S dollar F12 comma, okay, pi. So what we're saying is, okay, load this value pi in a coprocessor register, which is F12. Okay, so meaning in F12. Now why we are loading in F12? Because we want to print directly. If you want to do an something calculation and keep it somewhere else you can store anywhere guys f0 f1 f2 f3 up to f31 but yes one more important thing when we store double don't try to store the double value in odd coprocessors okay so always try to store the double in even process uh, registers f0 f2 f4 like that but float can be stored anywhere you feel like but anyhow, we are trying to print. So I told you whenever you want to print, it has to be first brought to F12. So once you bring it F12, and then tell the compiler, or oh, you know what, dollar, comma two. And as we said it, that if you see syscall code two, so when you give a syscall two in V0, that means you're telling the computer to print what? Float. And you see this, what is the requirement? That number float has to be in what? F12. So that what we did, we bought the number, this pi in F12, and then I'm giving a syscall code of two in V0, which mean um, you're telling the computer to print what? A float number, which is 
in dollar f12 so it's your duty whatever you want to print it make sure it comes in f12 so i wanted to bring this value in f12 i bought it then i'm telling the computer okay um the syscall code from my side is 2 and when you say syscall 2 in v0 now this is syscall 2 guys syscall is integers now syscall okay remember v0 is a special register is a function register so when you say syscall 2 in v0 meaning is like a command in the command meaning you're telling them to print what float which float the float which is in what f12 now they won't do the complete the action unless you do the syscall when you say the syscall computer will execute this now let's save it uh, this is print or uh, float once you save it then they will give you an option assemble it once you assemble it and when you run it here you see the value there you go it gives you value 3.14 something up to whatever number you stored it so 925 and we stored what 926 there's a slight rounding uh, error which can take place because uh, you know the number stored inside is in bits okay so when they reverse back uh, of course there's a chance of losing some amount of precise data okay so there you go we uh, we printed this number now let's make it a little bit let's do a small small program related with this one let's say for example if somebody asks you okay uh, I want to find the area of a circle okay so if you want to st store the area of a circle let's say you know what let's take a, another variable called radius declare it to be as what float okay let the radius be 2.1 for example okay so and you know this hash meaning is like a, I want to declare a comment so declaring the radius to be 2.1 okay centimeter or millimeter whatever your context is now let's say depending on this radius I want to find the area now we know what is the formula of the area guys area for formula for the area of the circle okay so now again I'm just putting a comment just to show you that formula of formula to find the area of a circle is what we know is pi r square isn't it so pi multiplied by r multiplied by r okay so let's say we need to multiply this three thing and get the answer now what we did is we loaded this value in what pi so we know this is pi okay now let's take uh, and let me load another one now so I'll say okay let me load in uh, dollar you can take any register you feel like okay so let me take 14 15 okay so I'm going to say now load the value radius this radius in f12 so try to understand that radius is in f12 and the pi value is in f12 now what we need to do is we need to multiply pi with radius two times now you can multiply and store it some in other registers but I will just prefer instead of wasting not to wait much registers what we'll do is we will multiply all of it and store it in f12 now just remember f12 has pi guys okay now I want to multiply pi with first one time with radius you know you can't multiply two time radius together so what we do is on the command to multiply you say mul but since it's a single if it's a float so you're going to use the word mul dot s so mul dot s dollar f12 dollar f12 comma dollar f14 now what we are saying is that in f14 you got radius so I'm saying take that radius multiply with the value which is in f12 which is what pi so you multiply pi and radius and store it in the same f12 okay so we're saying okay whatever pi value were there in f12 okay take that one multiply with f14 which is radius and store it in the same way now again guys like you know if you see the command here see they'll say you command what does it mean you know when you type this mul dot s and give space they'll tell you what does it mean so they're saying okay you need to define three registers and what does it mean that f1 and f3 which is the this two 
after multiplying will get after multiplying they will store it in f12 so basically what we needed is like i wanted to multiply this which is pi multiply this which is radius and store it in the same f12 instead of wasting any space you can store any way you feel like so i'm saying okay multiply f12 and f14 and store it in the f12 so basically now f12 is having the answer what guys pi and multiply by radius pi and one radius now i want to multiply one more time radius so we're going to say again in another line this f12 um f12 comma dollar f dollar f12 comma dollar f14 so we are saying okay now let me explain you this after this dollar f12 is actually pi multiply by time radius okay but now i need to have one more radius to multiply here in order to get pi r square okay so mean pi time radius radius so i got just one time i need one more so i'm saying okay take that f14 okay whatever is in f12 the f12 now has this much so i said take that f12 multiply with one more time radius and store it in the same f12 so basically now after this dollar f12 has what has this thing of course it has this thing from earlier Con sorry control z basically it has uh, this now one more time i have multiplied radius okay so you got another time led radius now once you got it and i want to print this answer so basically when you want to print the answer i told you that number whatever you want to print it has to be by default need to come in f12 and is already in f12 so i don't need to move here and there is already in f12 and that's the reason why i started keeping storing in f12 okay it's up to you how you want to do it and so once you do it and then give a syscall uh, to if you see the syscall code 2 is what to print what float and it had the number which you want to print the float number it has to be in f12 so right now the number which is there is already in f12 i'm giving a syscall 2 now when i give a function call final call syscall is going to give me the area of a circle with radius what 2.1 now let's have a look here save it run it assemble it and run it and there you go so it gives you 13.854422 okay so that's the area of circle with radius 2.1 now if you want to do with some other radius just change the radius and that's it it'll work for you okay but one thing remember that it works with a small precision of numbers if you have like more decimal numbers it will throw off the extra you know like uh, significant um, decimal numbers in the calculation so if you need more you have to work with double no double numbers now one thing remember we first loaded the float numbers in a variable and then we loaded it guys the, uh, remember there is no direct way of loading the float numbers directly to coprocessor in mars in mars meaning to say in this id there is no direct or there is no privilege there's no keywords which allow you to store directly uh, store this decimal number directly there what we're doing is we are storing this into a variable and then from variable we bring into this like you can't say like this list you know when you say in um, when you want to store integer you say li lost, lost immediately and you say okay i want to store in t0 uh, dollar t0 comma 4 for example okay so but if like for float you can't say okay load uh, load dot s okay so when you say this one 2.45 so i'll say okay load this directly in this one it won't work okay so if you say if you have a direct value say okay load this direct value in this by saying l dot s is not going to work so what meaning is not the privilege is not there in mars so you need to load the float value in a variable and then you can use this command to store it okay so that's it for this video and uh, for 
sprinting about double. We're going to catch up in next video.